Okay, guys, uh, Elijah here. Uh, welcome back to 85 Studios. Um, okay, so I, I gotta get all this stuff out of the way again. All this stuff out of the way. It's for streaming. I'm not using it. I'm recording right now. I'm not streaming. Okay, so uh, I did figure out the problem, um, and then I flipped everything on its nose. So here, let me flip it back on its uh, upright again, because that's just the way that I wanted it to, to print. Uh, was like this to where the uh, face of it would be down like that and that way it would be smooth. Um, I am using a zigzag pattern to fill it and so that is going to cause some weird stuff probably. Okay, this is going to go under the thing when I flip it up right, right? And then I pull it up a little bit. Okay, so now I can show you what I actually had to do in order to get the uh, from the last video that I've uploaded, um, what I did was I, oh, everything was selected. Okay. What I did was, um, I basically took a bunch of shapes and turned them into an A. And that way I could adjust the thickness of them. And that's what's inside of it. So, now, everything should work out. And so I went ahead and I exported it as an STL file. Uh, everything as an STL file. I got the STL file. I put it on uh, Cura. And I went ahead and, of course, it is down like this. So that the part that's on the bed is going to be the flattest part. And that's going to be... I don't know about necessarily pulling it off of the bed, but I'll pull it off when the bed is still warm so it doesn't have a chance of breaking anything off. And by design, the bed is only 32 inches or something to that effect. And so it's exactly right uh, compared to, well, it kind of looks like Swiss cheese at this angle. Um, so we went ahead and sliced it. And we went ahead and we did brim uh, for adhesion. Um, it's going to look something like that in the light coming out of it. You will be able to see the filament, uh, the grids inside of it. But I think it looks kind of neat that way. Um, so then what I went ahead and did um, was I need to add a new scene here right quick. Let me add a new scene. Um... I'm going to add a scene that's going to be camera. So I can show you my camera. Give me just a second. And we're going to add this camera, which is the webcam. Well, it's going to be video capture device on this. So, yep, there we go. And it's going to be that. And it's going to be HD Pro Webcam. Yep. Logitech HD Pro Webcam. And so now this is what it actually is going to be looking like. It's just like on the main screen. So it is actually 3D printing it right now. And we'll see how it turns out. Um, but what's interesting about this is um, it's going to... 36 uh, grams or 12.10 uh, meters of uh, filament and it's going to take seven hours and seven minutes so rather than sitting here and um, that's what it looks like right now as it's going to be printing um, it's just got this base layer right now so anything yellow is actually going to be the actual material uh, anything red uh, actually, um, the, let's see, view type, well, x-ray view, what does that do? Oh, okay, so this is what it's actually going to look like, um, but it's going to be, you're going to be seeing it from this side, and actually, that ender is in the way, <laughs> because it's an ender, uh, it's an ender, um, Realty Ender 3. So it's got that plate. Um, but I'm printing on a mirror, obviously, so this is what you actually see um, as it prints. 
So seven hours and seven minutes, and I'm not going to record that entire thing. I have a one terabyte solid state drive. Uh, I could change it to one of my other hybrid drives and still print it out and then fast forward it. That would make an interesting video, I'm sure, but how many of you would be willing to sit through 10 minutes of watching this thing print? I mean, although it is slightly satisfying, uh, we're just going to uh, go ahead and let it print, and I'll stop the video, and then I'll start the video again when it's finished printing, and that'll be... I'm going to probably sleep a little bit uh, before that's done. This is sticking pretty well, um, and it's looking pretty good. So I think uh, we should be fine on that front. But, uh, yeah. And I cleaned the mirror with alcohol uh, where it counts and re-leveled the bed and made sure it was level. It wasn't really unlevel, so. Because if you look at where it uh, was on the outside is where it first started printing. That's the uh, brim. And it's a, it was a little bit high here on this side and it was a little bit high on the other side but i just went ahead and adjusted it using the little wheels here so we should be fine and it'll go ahead and print it oh this camera is not going to adjust for me to that screen but we should be good and i'll let it print and i'll get back with you guys okay so see you in seven hours and seven minutes it'll be instant for you guys <laughs> all right Alrighty then. Hi everybody. How are you? I'm Elijah. Um, and uh, some of you guys are going to remember uh, from my last video, I had started working on this, uh, which is just a nameplate, basically a, a light up sign. Uh, got the little holes for the LEDs and that kind of stuff. Well, I got a look at this um, and I noticed that when I took away the lines, I started seeing little problems and i was really hoping that they wouldn't carry over onto the finished product see where the j has a little slit here well it has a little slit there but it's closed up mostly by the uh the fiber the um filament wow anyway uh there's a little one here there's a little one here and there's a little one right here uh that are just little holes that go across um well i ended up uh getting the thing uh, finally printed, and uh, I ended up switching over, and I'm just, oh, I'm going to put this on my keyboard here. So it is actually complete. Why do vapes have magnets in them? Seriously. It, like, grabs everything metal and just, Arr. yeah. Anyway, okay, so here is the actual sign. Uh, and it is complete. And it's got the little holes there. Uh, we did do a little damage there on... I don't know if you can see that, how well you can see that. We did do a little damage there. Uh, because we ended up uh, pulling off a little piece of... Uh, it looked like netting. Uh, it was filament that was part of the support structure. Because the J is, for some reason, a little bit further forward than all the other uh, letters. Um... I'm not exactly sure why that is, if that's just because of the way that uh, it came out, or if that was some kind of design flaw, and I think that maybe I didn't move that for, far enough for it. And also, um, my bottom two uh, holes in my H for the LEDs to come through are non-existent. So I guess I'm going to have to get a drill and drill those out to 5 millimeters. Which is what I was thinking about doing anyway, instead of having all these little holes in it already pre-made. Um, but, um, and I've got some fuzz inside my A uh, from the filament travel. So I'm going to have to take a lighter and kind of burn that out. Um, it should just melt away and melt into the sides or whatever. So it should be fine. Uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and uh, take some circuit board and some solder and go ahead and start... Um, well, first I'm going to pop some LEDs into this. Um, I'm not going to put a board directly on the sign. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to run uh, all of the circuits in parallel so that I can uh, go ahead and just plug them into uh, my driver board 
and then into my Arduino Uno, which is going to switch the colors. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to alternate the colors. It's three color LEDs. There are, three, there are four pin, one's a ground, and then there's three cathodes. Or, sorry, one's an anode, and then there's three cathodes. They're uh, common anode LEDs. And then what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to run them off of the Arduino Uno, uh, but I've got to have a driver board there because there's there's too many there's too many amps there. The Arduino Uno can really only handle about 20 milliamps, and we're talking about three milliamps per LED, so uh, that's not good. We have too many. So we're going to have to get a MOSFET, uh, three MOSFETs. We're going to make a board, and we're going to solder all that in place, and then we're going to go ahead and drive the uh, LEDs from that from a separate source. The LEDs aren't going to be much more than about 5 volts, so we should be fine uh, running uh, resistors and then running it off our 12 volts over here. So our 12 volt for this sign, I don't know if you guys... I don't think I made a video of making that sign, um, but... Um, that that right there is our 12 volt power box uh it's like a wall wart so we're going to drive it off of that and then um we'll go ahead and go from there um i'll build a circuit i'll tell you what i'll time lapse the circuit as i build it for you guys and i'll show you guys um i can walk you through it actually yeah once it's complete so anyway let me get my electronics boxes out here and uh i'll be right with you okay okay give me just a second here <clears throat> okay, uh, and by the way, we've got a new sound here, um, I can't remember what this thing is called, it says blue on it, it's a ball, uh, it's a microphone, um, snowball, or yeti, blue, blue yeti, snowball, I think, so, guys, let me know if that sounds okay or not um so anyway um what we got going on here um we've got the um still not prepared uh just a moment these are a little overkill for this circuit whoops where are you these are a little overkill for this circuit uh these are the uh kse 13004 uh transistors and uh what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and make a circuit for them Okay, so this is my program here. This is called TinyCAD, and what we're going to do is we're going to uh, design a circuit uh, for this, a schematic for this circuit, uh, so that we don't get lost and we know exactly what we're doing at all times here and where we are. So we need transistors. These are NPN transistors. Um, I'm going to grab the symbol. I'm going to stick it right here, and one right here, and one right here. And we don't need any of this. I just need something that will allow me to uh, quickly uh, go to, uh, you know, reference so that I can see what's going on. So we're going to go, um, need power, but um, we need a battery symbol. Really? We're going to need a, a battery symbol because... Uh, that shows uh, DC voltage, and there isn't a DC voltage source, so we're just going to go from here, and remember these are all common cathode, uh, so we're going to want to connect all the cathodes. And uh, then we have that, and then we want our resistors, which we're using a... Um, these are, um, 15 kilo ohm, uh, 1500 ohms. So, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to come in, uh, let's see, resistor. And it's going to be under analog and it's going to be resistor. Yes. And we're going to put a resistor on each input. And if you guys don't know about transistors and how they work, I can actually make a video for you on how transistors work as well. Um, because it's important that you know that uh, before you go wiring anything electronic up. Uh, because if you were to... Ooh, we messed that up. That's okay. We can grab this and move it. 
Let's redo that right quick. Oh, okay. Let's get our wire tool. Come back here. There we go. We want everything to be kind of straight and clean so we can see what, it's, what it is and what it's doing. And that's not great either, but neither is that, neither is that. Okay, we're good. Um, just looks terrible. Um, we're going to grab an Arduino here, which I added this library because they didn't have one. Oops. Helps to be able to spell it. That's an R3. No. Mega. This is my Arduino that I added. Okay. So we have... Um, let's... Uh, what we want to do is we want to tie our grounds together. So let's go ahead and tie our grounds in first before we do anything else. Um, because that's going to be the very first thing. And what we want is that going to our ground pin right there. And that's, see all the grounds are tied together? Okay. Um, your positive is, this is 12 volt. And, um, let's see, we're probably going to have a 5 volt here too, huh? You know what we could do? Um, we could just go ahead and uh, make a one-line reference. Um, so let's do that instead. Uh, let's do shape, and we're just going to come up here to the barrel jack, and we're going to go boop. And... Uh, Sorry, I'm not the greatest at this, but wow, we meant to make an arrow, but we made some crappy little weird thing. I don't know. Third time's a charm. There we go. Okay. So, and then we're just going to put some text here. Um, we're going to run, uh, because this uh, barrel jack will handle anywhere from 12 volts to, um, I think, 3 volts, 3 to 12 volts, 3 to like 20 volts. And we're putting 12 volts on it, so um, we're just going to go ahead and do this. And we're going to go ahead and connect our, well, that's already connected there. So we might as well connect it here too. And we'll make another wire. And that's going to be going to uh, here. Sorry, and I'm trying to rush on this too so that we don't have a freaking hour-long video. But, um, no, stop snapping to that. Okay, so we got our hot and we got our ground coming in there. We got our, uh, we've got another one that's going to be coming off of here. And we're going to be coming around. And we're going to be going, let's just, okay. Um, let's just go ahead and do that. Okay. So, we're going to have, uh, our other resistors are going to be, um, I believe they're, what I use, 330 ohm. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to, uh, bring it in, we'll go resistor. And we're going to go recent because that's the same resistor. We just got a different value on it. Um, we're going to go. There. We're going to go. There. And we're going to go. There. And then um, 
I'm just going to use one resistor, but there's a uh, one LED for this line uh, because what's going to happen is we're going to have multiple, but um, it's probably. Yeah, okay. Um, we're going to have multiple LEDs, but um, they're going to be different colors, obviously. Um, they're going to be three color LEDs, and so. And they're all going to be in parallel. So each LED is going to have this setup on it. Just like, well, let's, so it's going to be like this. And we're going to connect it right here. That might be a little bit too close together. That's fine. We really didn't match this with anything. Okay, so this is how this is going to work. That's how that wires in. Okay, and um, from here... We've got these, which are going to be going to pins, which we're not going to use 13 because it's got an LED on it on the UNO board. Anybody who has an UNO board knows that that's not the best pin to get uh, good voltage out of. Um, wow, what is going on there? Okay, anyway, we're going to go with uh, 12, 11, and 10 on this for our digital out, uh, outputs. And then we're going to write some code. So stick around, we'll write the code. Um, it might be a little bit... I might break this up into parts, actually. Uh, but that's for this sign. And that's how that's going to work. Um, what the Adreno board is going to do is it's going to uh, basically switch between these three LEDs, and remember these LEDs are all inside one chip. And I'll show you what one of these chips looks like, uh, what one of these tricolor LEDs looks like. Um, let me switch my camera here. See how they got four pins? The long pin is your ground, or is your anode. I don't know if you can see that or how well you can see that. Where I'll move it into the black area. The long pin is your anode, and the rest, one of them's red, one of them's green, one of them's blue. So, and it's all one chip, and it's not diffused. Interesting colors inside there. Sorry about the quality of this camera, guys. It's terrible. I'm really not set up for this yet, but uh, we'll get to that in a little while. Um, anyway, so... Um, that is our that is our basic schematic for this um and this is going to be obviously 12 volts uh we're gonna have 12 volts coming in these are all going to be five volts because there's an internal step down uh there's a regulator inside the board that drops everything down to f either five volts or three volts um depending uh and uh let's see what else can i tell you um so I think we're ready to go ahead and start building the circuit. Um, be aware, uh, I might decide to go ahead and break this up into multiple videos because uh, when this comes out, it's going to be a super long video. Unless you guys really want a really long video, then I'll just leave that up as one long video. Actually, honestly, it doesn't really matter. So you guys probably either watch it or you don't anyway. So if you watch it, thank you very much. If you don't, then, you know, whatever. Um... If you do like these kind of videos, please leave me a like so I know, and that way I know I should make more videos like this. Um, okay, so let's just jump into the electronics part of this. And this camera is absolutely awful, and I'm wondering if there's anything I can do to make it better. Um, well, that might help a little bit. Okay. So, um, our transistors, uh, let's see, let me get you a pin out here. 
grab you a pin out. That is the data sheet for the Fairchild KSC 13004 transistor. And I don't know how much you can read here, but I am actually just looking for a pin out. We already know that, I already know anyway, that they are good for 600 volts at 4 amps. Uh, that's between collector and emitter. And there's no way we're going to be hitting 2 amps at the, uh, at the base, so that's not a worry. But their maximum at the base from base to collector is 2 amps. So... And, and we're not going to be outputting that much. We're not going to be needing that much. So I'm looking for a pinout, and it should be on this data sheet somewhere. Uh, let's see. I'm seeing dimensions. I'm seeing characteristics. And I'm not seeing a pinout. Okay, well, I'm going to assume... That if it's anything like the MOSFETs, uh, it's going to be base, collector, emitter, because those are, well, base, collector, emitter. emitter. These are going to be uh, your negative. This is going to be uh, your uh, switch. That's going to be your positive coming back in. And this is going to be where you put your current on, or your, uh, your gate, basically, uh, the uh, base. Okay, so... Uh, well, you know what? Should I really? I mean, it's not drawing that many amps, but... Okay, there we go. Uh, base, collector, emitter. I was absolutely right. Right here. Yeah. Okay. So, in other words, what that means is... This right here is going to be your base... The middle one's going to be your collector, and the uh, one on the right is going to be your emitter. And you're looking at me through a magnifying glass. That's kind of neat. Let's see what this does. Oh yeah, that, that really picks it up. That's great. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to do is arrange one of these in a way, such a way that uh, it's going to allow me... Oh, and this is a prototyping board. This is an IC board. So, I'm... I'm able to work with it, but, uh, yeah, it's not the greatest. Um, okay, uh, all right. And what's really good about this is I don't have a solder station that needs to be really heated up. I'm using the, uh, solder gun, uh, here. I don't know if you can see it yeah so it doesn't take long to heat up it's just pretty much instant um i do need some solder though and i have some somewhere uh had some wherever i put it um oh here you go and this is just the finest little teeny weeny solder i mean it's like yeah look at that you can't see it i put it under the magnifying glass See how thin that is? That is the tiniest solder ever. But I'm going to go ahead and start soldering this in. And we did say that that was... That's backwards. Okay. Because that's facing. And we want to get this in here. By the way, these helping hands. Uh, electrician's hand. Electronics hand helping hand with the alligator clips very very helpful very helpful if you don't have one of these you should probably get one if you do any kind of electronics or small work okay so what we do is we heat the pin and just kind of dab the solder in And I'm going to do a uh, kind of fast-forward type thing here. So I'll be right back.
Oh, when's the last time you guys saw Radio Shack on a board? I mean, that's that's an old board. That one's been around for a long time. I had a stockpile of these a while back. But, um, yeah, um, so we've got another one here. We got one in. We got another one here that we're getting ready to solder in. So, uh, I don't know what to do with this. Yeah, there's the third one. Okay. So this solder is kind of terrible. I bought it off of eBay. Uh, it does the job, I guess, but it's... Wow, am I going to be right in your way there? Here, let's get you... Since I'm right-handed, let's get you on this side. Let's put you on this side. Can I put you on this side? Does that work? Let's get you on this side. Move this a little bit. Yeah, since I'm right-handed. Oh, hey, there's a lens cover. Since I'm right-handed, it probably makes more sense. All right, so come in here and feed some solder to it. Feed the beast. Get this off of here. Out of your way. Magnifying lens. Whoop. Maybe. There we go. That's a little better. All right. So now you can see what I'm doing. And we're going to go ahead and just solder these in. Where does that help? Any? I have an ant crawling on me. Stupid ants. They come in when it rains. I do not know why. I want to give this a chance to cool down between soldering it. That way the transistor gets cooled down. And you're actually not supposed to touch the... That is, yeah, yeah, that is in the right place. I was just making sure. You want to give this transistor a chance to cool down between soldering connections because uh, if it gets too hot, then it can actually damage it. But we're going to go ahead and solder this one in. Didn't get anything on that. There's one. Did we make a bridge? I don't believe we did. Be careful not to get a solder bridge. Because if you connect them, it's bad. Let me check here. My eyes ain't so good. Warm too. Deserts and weighing. I cannot tell if that's a solder bridge or not. Doesn't look like it. Looks like we did okay. Um, but we do need to put more solder on that middle one. So I'm going to give it a little bit of an angle here. Yeah, I was just worried that we'd gotten solder where we shouldn't be getting solder. It should be. What's worse is this electrician's helper keeps wanting to move on me. That's a solder bridge. Now, okay. This is what I was avoid, trying to avoid. See that middle one there? That is a solder bridge. I don't know if you can see that. That's a solder bridge. You don't want that. So let's fix that. And I'm just going to run it because I grip it down until they come disconnected. I have a desoldering tool, but it's going to take forever to warm up. So I don't really want to heat it up. 
right now. And did he clear it? Yeah, sort of. Yeah, we cleared it. Other than a little bit of flux that's on there, I think we cleared it. So this is... Zoom is... Wow. Your zoom is terrible. Yeah, we cleared it. And now we need to redo it. Because it looks freaking awful. That's why you don't want solder bridges. But since I don't have any reading glasses and I can't see, I'm doing bad things. Don't worry, we'll test all this before we power it up. Let's get clear over to the other pin. You can see my sapphire over there sleeping. Clear in there. Baby girl, touch. Hi, baby. I love you. Who do? Who's cute? Yeah, she's cute. I love her. Okay, let's see. Let's get this up a little higher so I can see it a little better. I'm freaking blind. So, I'm going to have to probably run to one of the grocery stores, uh, like Walmart or something, and grab a pair of reading glasses, because I cannot see. Everything is blurry. And, uh, it's just up close that I can't see. So, I'm hoping that it's not a big deal. But, as you, some of you know already, if you are, have been with the channel for a while... I am a type 1 diabetic, so I am prone to vision problems. Oh, that's a shitty solder joint. Terrible job, job solder joint. Okay, and I think, well, since I can't see what I'm doing here, um, I'm going to grab my uh, test meter and test for the short. Because uh, I don't want to uh, short anything out and I can't see what I'm doing. That's a problem. Great. Everything avalanches down. I don't know what I did with my meter. Wow, that's weird. The light is making this uh, green. Let me see if I can fix that. I forgot I still had green screen on this. Let's take this off. And... Oops. Crappy. 
see anything? Yeah, okay, there we go. It's a yellow solder iron, and I got a blue light on it, so it turns it green. Oh. I'm sorry, guys. I'm very disorganized, and I can't see anything, so, yeah. Give me a second. Okay, so I got the multimeter here. Just got to put everything together here. Probes and leads and test leads and stuffs. So we want volts and ohms and diodes and all that. Okay, and I'm just going to test this to make sure that I didn't actually make a solder bridge here. So it's on that beep mode. Where if you touch these together, it should beep. Oh, yeah, I have to push select. And, yeah, now it's in that beep mode. Okay, just make sure. Oh, that was me touching them together. Yeah, we're good. No solder joints, or solder bridges. Okay. Let's see if we can make one before the end of the day. Good old solder bridges. So we're good there. Uh, I really need to uh, run up to the store and grab a pair of reading glasses because uh, I cannot see anything up close. It is really bad, guys, I'm telling you. I'm not that old, but... I am a diabetic, I'm a type 1, and I'm, I'm here to tell you now uh, what it does to your vision uh, when your blood sugar is either high or low, or if it's been high or low for a very long time and you adjust it, uh, is not good. You can't see anything. Your vision, it blurs out. So, okay, anyway, let's get some resistors on this board right quick, um, and we're going to go with the uh, 15K, which is... I don't know how well you can see it, or if you can see anything at all. Okay, your camera is frozen. Ah, okay. I see. Well, got the camera back. So, um, 15 kilo ohm. And that's, uh, I don't know how well you can see it. That color code, which I'm not going to read off the camera. It's, uh... It's a brown, red, orange, 15 kilo ohm. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put one in line with the base of the transistor, of each transistor. Uh, and remember our schematic here. Uh, remember our schematic here. That's going to be this. And... What we're dealing with is these resistors here. We've already got these soldered into the board, and these are coming out uh, through the wires here, and each one's going to be connected LED with a resistor. So then we'll uh, get the Arduino out, we'll do a little programming on it, and we'll go from there. So let's go ahead and Flip these up. Now these things are cool looking. We probably ought to get some heat sinks for them actually. Uh, and remember, your base pin is going to be this one right on this side. If you're looking at it uh, from the back or from the front there, that's going to be the base pin. It's going to be one all the way on the left. So what we want to do is we want to run a little old transistor here whoops bend that transistor kind of like that not so much oh get in there there we go 
Kind of like that. See where that's coming through? And it's just one. And I'm just going to set up one transistor for you, um, and then I'm just going to move on to when it's finished. Sapphire girl. She had the shakes. I don't know why dogs always do that when they, w when they wake up. But anyway, it's a dog thing. And again, I can't see anything. That's not good. So we're going to try this blind. See how well we do. Blind soldering. Good name for band, right? Okay. That's freaking not what I wanted. I just blobbed up that solder joint. See if we can reuse it. I doubt it. See if we can clean it up. I mean, not terrible, but it's pretty bad. I've seen worse. I mean, I've seen worse, but it's pretty bad. I'm not a pro. I'm really not. I am no... Uh, what's his name? Um, Big Clive. <laughs> I love that guy. He's so great. Um, but I'm just making a sign. You know, it's not it's not anything special. It's just it's got it's a sign with my name on it. And then um, I guess what we'll do. Uh, maybe this light will help. I don't know. I am seriously blind. I cannot see Jack here. tighten this. Pardon my hand. Okay, well, maybe. No, it's not doing any good anyway. Uh, magnifying lens might help me a little bit. Does that interfere with you guys' view at all? Yeah, that helps me tremendously. Uh, can you guys still see the circuit? The board? A little bit? Okay. Yeah, that helps me tremendously. Now I can actually see to get in here and do this. See what I'm doing. As I say, a pair of reading glasses would help me tremendously. I cannot see Jack. There we go. Very carefully. Yeah, let's get it rid of that. I need a, I need a wire, um, thing. Anyway, I need a, uh, uh, what does he call that? Um, removal tool, solder removal tool. Um, in fact, uh, I might come back in here later on and desolder these, um, and then just clean them up a little bit. Get my nippers. Okay, that one. By the way, don't throw these on the floor. They hurt to step on. Learn that one the hard way. Just telling you ahead of time so that you don't uh, end up making my same same mistake. They hurt barefoot, and these do too.
Probably should be wearing safety glasses too. Probably a good idea. Just saying. I'm just nipping them down. I know Clive, he uh, nips everything down like that after he's done with the circuit. But I find that if I don't nip them early like that, then they get in my way and uh, they cause issues. So, yeah. Man, that light really does number on you guys' view. It's not actually that bright. It's just LED. But it helps me to be able to see through the magnifying glass because I have no reading glasses. I'll tell you what. Um, let me go uh, run to the store right quick. I'll go grab some reading glasses and get this magnifying glass out of your way. And then I'll come back and I'll finish this up, okay? But yeah, um, so far, uh, this right here, this is where your Arduino pin is going to hook on. And that's going through that resistor into the base of that transistor. And then this right here, between these two, is your switch. So, uh, what that's going to do is, uh, you're going to go PWM through your, uh, yes, we have PWM pins selected, 12, 11, and 13, 10, 11, and 12. Is 10 a PWM? Yes. Those are all PWM pins. So, what that means is, Pulse width modulation uh, is what PWM stands for, and PWM, what it does is it oscillates or blinks a DC uh, voltage and current at a frequency that uh, the human eye cannot tell that it is actually blinking at that frequency, and so your eye will see it as being dimmer, and it makes it to where... Like, say, if you have red or green or blue, you can go through that color spectrum with all those three colors, and you can see any color based on how fast that uh, PWM is cutting in and out of the waveform. I know that's something a lot more complicated than uh, what's usually on this channel, but it's... That's the way it works. Um, if you want to look up PWM, you can look it up. It's called Pulse Width Modulation. Pulse Width. Width, as in wide, modulation. It's uh, an interesting thing. Um, so I'm going to go grab some reading glasses from either Dylan's or Walmart or Dollar General or something, and uh, I'll be right back, okay? Okay, now that's uh, much, 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 much better. Um, got some reading glasses so I can actually see. Um, and you can actually see, because there's not a magnifying glass in your way. Alright, so um, here's what we're doing. Um, I put this thing on top of my resistors, or maybe I didn't. I'm just not sure what I did with my resistors. The other two, oh, uh, solder. Yeah, I don't know what I did with my resistors. They were sitting here on the table. And now they're gone. Well, I'll be right back again. Find the resistors again. Couldn't find the resistors, so I went ahead and got two more out of the bag. Um, I'll probably find the other two in the odd place somewhere, and uh, I have no idea where, but um, now I can actually see. Uh, so um, we're going to go ahead and uh, flip them and do this. And we're going to put it... Well, in the base of this resistor, or transistor, sorry. And there we go. 
that, no. Let's make them look right. Let's put them the right direction, the same direction. They're not directional, but for me, when I look at a circuit board and I see that the resistors are going all different directions, um, then uh, I tend to think that somebody did a sloppy job. So they're going the same direction now. And those are uh, 1500 ohm, or 1.5k ohm. Must have lost track of what I was doing. Oops. See what I did? I soldered this one on the outside and those two on the inside with one out. Because that's where there's supposed to be wires coming off. But there's not because the resistors are going this way. Off the base. So, yeah. I'm, like I say, I'm running on six of eight cylinders. So, uh, we're good. We're good. Um... Yeah, looks okay, other than that one being popped up from where it got hot and I pushed it too far in. Yeah, uh, no heat sinks on this. We're not really pulling any amps, so not really worried about that too much. Um, other than that, yeah, we uh, kind of did that kind of dumb, but that's okay. We can fix that. Um... Yeah. Anyway, um, let me go grab some wire and tin it. And some white wire. Okay, here it is. We'll use the white wire. We'll tin it. Actually, I have some... No, that's not going to work. That's uh, two-ended, both female wires for jumpers. Besides that, we might want to use them again, so we'll jump them. Is it solid core? This is solid core wire. Oh, you can't see it. Okay. Well, I will um, strip it, and then you can see it. So this might actually solder in It's if I tin it. It's like 24 AWG. Solid core. Yeah. And that might actually be pretend, but I don't know. So I'm going to tin it just to make sure.
on one end anyway, so I can solder it into the board. Notice the solder never actually touches the iron. The wire heats up. The solder touches the wire. Well, now it's tinned anyway. Because if the solder touches the iron, it burns it, and it smokes. Well, that, and it's got rosin in it, and the rosin smokes. Okay, so we got that end. Um, we're going to connect this to our resistor. Come out a good length. Uh, that way we can attach the other end of this to our, well, to our Arduino Uno R3. Oh, just dropped the spool at the end of my solder here. It's alright, it's all getting used anyway. Nope. Need to clean my solder tip. Because it's just taking solder with it now at this point. We did get a decent joint there. Yep. Yeah, that's a ball. It's cold. Good enough. Well, I don't know about for solid core wire. Because, you know, you get to moving that solid core around and it's going to... So we want this to be fairly short run. And I'm going to clip it right here. Just so we have just enough to make it where we want to go. Strip the next end. And... Since nobody else is using this uh, circuit, and it's not going to be installed in anybody's house or anything, I am going to go ahead and use the same color of wire, just for the simple fact that I only have one color of wire on hand. Uh, so, and no one else is going to see it but me. Nobody else is going to have to mess with it but me.
So there's the completed driver board for the LEDs and we are set here. Look at the back here. All the solder joints are good. I tested them for bridges and there are no solder bridges using my multimeter because I'm terrible at soldering. I may have mentioned this before, but uh, we are ready for our sign. So we'll take this down here. Oh, I have e-liquid for my vape. Uh, it's been about three days now, so... Uh, there's all of our LEDs in the back of our board, and we are ready for the next phase of this project. So we're going to start connecting these. Um, all of the cathodes are down. These are common cathode LEDs, actually. Um, I may have accidentally said anode, common anode before, and that's not right. So um, I'm going to go ahead and start wiring this in, and I'm not going to show this, uh, this part in the actual video um, but this is just the way they're all the anodes uh, for the different colors <laughs> look at that puppy girl she's so cute baby girl but yeah um neighbor's car alarms going off that's fun um anyway um yeah uh we're gonna go ahead and uh wire these up all the cathodes uh are gonna be wired together through a resistor and all the anodes of different colors are going to be wired together um, of the red, the green, and the blue throughout the entire project. So, let's see. Um, this is our Arduino Uno R3, and we are going to go ahead and I decided to, um, instead of programming something of my own, I'm going to do a little prototyping here and see what I can get here, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, just see if I can grab a code quick off of the internet because I'm sure there's a lot of codes out there that'll do the same thing. In fact, I found one earlier that was uh, for an RGB to HSV converter. And what that's going to do is it's going to give us a nice color wheel. And once we do that, then uh, we should have this project done here pretty soon. Now we're in a testing phase and we're going to go ahead and uh, we've got the the first part of it uh, lit up here. That's the E, and we're just going to continue down the line like this, and we're doing really good. This is the code that I got online, and I'll drop a link to that in the description of the video if you guys are interested and check it out. Um, even if you're running a single LED, it's kind of cool. Um, it just does a color wheel uh, for red, green, blue. It cycles through the spectrum. And the camera's not really giving this justice. It actually looks like it's really not reflecting in there, but it actually is in real life. It's refracting off the uh, white PLA inside of the E, and actually you can see it in some colors, but others you can't. Um, I lost my audio on this clip for some reason, so I'm doing kind of narration, uh, if you didn't notice. But uh, I'm, I'll give you play-by-play, -play, sure. Um, pretty much we wired up uh, the last of this and then um, I will go ahead and skip ahead here uh, so show you the finished product here so this has been a kind of a long one uh, about three days worth of work uh, with the driver board um, with the Arduino Uno all of the uh, all of the different LEDs the 3d printing and all of that so it's uh, kind of cool I think and uh, if you guys uh, were to want to do something like that um, like this for your name or any other thing that you would want to make um, the PLA actually if you go uh, one millimeter on your uh, facings on your PLA uh, and I'm listening to less let's read podcast here I think that's part of the reason why my audio I muted it out because uh, listening to true scary stories horror stories I love I love let's read it's it's a great channel there's so many great channels on YouTube and let's read and uh, a lot of those other people uh, the narrators I call them they're they're great channels they they just they help you pass the time if you're doing something tedious and you know it's, you get to hear a good story in the process so that's the back side of it um, and we've just got like I say the cathode is running to the ground on the Arduino Uno and that's just like the schematic and I'm gonna put chapters in this so that you can actually go back and look at the schematic in that so I'm not gonna put it back in right now um, and then 
that is our driver board finished. Uh, solder looks a lot better. I got a desoldering tool finally, and those are the three pins coming in from the Arduino Uno. Um, PWM pins are marked with a tilde, um, and that is the HSV, RGB to HSV converter uh, code for the Arduino Uno R3, or any Arduino actually. Um, and uh, what else can I show you here, guys? Uh, well, let's just uh, drop back into the second part of this video where we're we're basically just going to uh, we're going to go ahead and um, show you the finished product and uh, let you move on with your day here. I really do appreciate you watching, everybody. Thank you so much. Um, bearing with me, sticking with me here. Um, I know that there's a lot more to this that's very complicated that is not normal content for my channel. Um, and I know that I'm kind of a multi-crowd kind of channel here, running a multi-crowd channel. So um, I really do appreciate you sticking with me. If you watch the videos, um, this long video uh, is going to be the start of the longer videos with chapters in them. So I'm going to make sure that there are chapters in it and I'll go through my uh, video and make sure that it's got chapters in it so you guys can just click around on the title bar to whatever chapter you want to click on and I'll try not to make the chapters too long. Okay here is your final finished product. Now what I was trying to do before was I was gonna go uh, red, green, blue uh, and then uh, switch them over to where each letter is a different color at a different time but what was happening was I was having trouble with uh, drop voltage drop and if anybody's familiar with electronics then you know that voltage drop it, what it does is it's going to cause when it's your red draws the most amps um, so if it's connected in parallel with a green or a blue then when that red okay so I ran out of video here but what I was trying to say was um, when you have a red diode, uh, a red LED, um, you got red, green, and blue inside the same uh, in case, right? Uh, if you're running a red LED and the, it's in parallel with a green and a blue, um, what's going to happen is you're going to have drop. And it's because the red uses the most uh, milliamps, the most amps. To run and so it basically more or less drops the voltage in the green and the blue especially the blue because the green uses the second most and the blue uses the least of the colors so even though they are inside the same case and the same LED so to speak uh, you have different voltages inside there from anode to cathode so you're going to have different forward voltages. And since we're using one resistor on each cathode for each LED, and we're using so many LEDs, when I went to cross over, like say when you have red going to a red LED in parallel with a blue LED, and we're talking anodes, a red anode in parallel with a green anode, or a blue anode in parallel with a red anode then the red anodes always going to take precedent so we have some weird colors and we have blue and green fade out which means that the blue and the green would no longer work it would have been really cool uh, for the idea that I had but without putting a separate resistor on each anode um, then you know we wouldn't need it on the cathode obviously uh, we would not be able to get those brilliant uh, reds, greens, and blues. So what we ended up doing was, we, I mean me, what I ended up doing was I just went ahead and made everything one solid color so that all of the colors are in parallel, all coming on at the same time. So that makes it a little less exciting, but still pretty cool. All right, guys. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll stop chattering at you, and I'll leave you alone, although I hate to. Take care, peace be with you, and stay true to yourselves. Bye.